This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 386, 30 Things to Let Go of Before the New Year, part one, by Mark Sharonoff of markandangel.com, and I'm your host and narrator, Justin Mollick. Happy Saturday and New Year's Eve, and welcome back to Optimal Living Daily, where I read to you every single day from the best personal development and minimalism blogs I can find and get permission from. I can't believe this year is almost over. It'll be over in 24 hours, crazy. I thought I'd end the year with some posts that relate to the new year. I'm actually gonna start a two-part post from Mark and Angel, who are very well-known in the personal development space. They've been writing about it for a very long time. And actually, I've been giving away their book to random people on my mailing list for a while. And the next drawing is tonight at midnight, when 2017 begins. So if you wanna be in that drawing, just make sure you're on my mailing list by midnight. You can join at oldpodcast.com or you can text the word optimal to the number 44222. Being part of my mailing list is totally free and all it means is that you'll get a weekly email from me with life tips, quotes, pictures sometimes, and short updates with what's going on in my life and the podcast. It's a really nice way to show your support if you're part of it. So again, come by oldpodcast.com and enter your email address there or text the word optimal to the number 44222. But that's enough of an intro, so let's get right to the post as we optimize your life. 30 Things to Let Go of Before the New Year, Part 1, by Mark Sharonoff of markandangel.com. Quote, Yesterday afternoon, my twin sister called me from her hospital room. She's been in a coma for almost a year now. Entering the holiday season and New Year with my sister back at my side is a priceless feeling. We actually spent the entire night together, talking and laughing. She's still weak, of course, but surprisingly coherent, unquote. That's the opening paragraph to an email I received this morning from a reader named Amber. It caught my attention for obvious reasons. Amber then went on to say, quote, but you know what the really crazy thing is? A month before my sister's accident, we got in a ridiculous argument and didn't speak to each other for that entire month. And today, honestly, neither one of us can even remember why we were so darn mad. We were just being stubborn and holding on to the wrong thoughts. I'm so grateful we were able to let it go and get another chance to love each other, unquote. Wow, talk about a wake-up call and a great reminder for all of us to let it go. And since the new year is just around the corner, which inspires many of us to refocus our energy and attention on the right things, I think it's a perfect time right now to start letting go of the wrong things. Wouldn't you agree? So today, I challenge you to this. Before the new year, number one, let go of your temper. Never do something permanently foolish just because you are temporarily upset. Number two, let go of petty grudges. Life is far too short to be spent nursing bitterness and registering wrongs. If there's someone in your life who deserves another chance, give it to them. If you need to apologize, do it. Give your story together a happy new beginning. Number three, let go of the idea that everyone has it better than you. If the grass looks greener on the other side, stop staring, stop comparing. Stop complaining and start watering the grass you're standing on. Number four, let go of lingering false beliefs. Stop from time to time and ask yourself, is it true? It's funny how we can sometimes wrap our minds around things and fit them into our version of reality, but thinking something does not make it true. Wanting something does not make it real, so watch your thoughts, be wise. When your identity is not rooted in the truth, it can lead to toxic and lonely places where we seek approval from the wrong things. Read what loving is. Number five, let go of expired ideals. Growth is painful, change is painful, but in the end, nothing is as painful as staying stuck somewhere you do not belong. Number six, let go of yesterday's tragedies. You are not what has happened to you, you are what you choose to become in this moment. Drop the needless burden, take a deep breath, and start again. Ultimately, you will know you are on the right track in life when you become disinterested in looking back and eager to take the next step. Number seven, let go of your tendency to avoid problems. You cannot change what you refuse to confront. Number eight, let go of life's little annoyances. Don't let dumb little things break your happiness. Frustration and stress come from the way you react, not the way things are. Adjust your attitude, and the frustration and stress is gone. Number nine, let go of assuming other people are more quote-unquote normal than you. The only normal people you know are the ones you don't know very well, period. Number 10, let go acting standoffish and unapproachable. We all need to learn to be more human. Don't avoid eye contact. Don't hide behind gadgets. Smile often. Ask about people's stories. 
listen. Number 11, let go of the idea that some people are below you. Even if you've worked really hard to get to where you are in life, there's no such thing as a self-made person. Someone believed, encouraged, and invested in you. Be grateful and be that someone to others too. What goes around eventually comes around. No one has ever made themselves strong in the long run by showing how small someone else is. So don't be lazy and make assumptions about people. Ask about their story and then listen. Be humble, be teachable, be human, be a good neighbor. Number 12, let go of the idea that you are what you physically own. You are an incredible human being who is entirely detached from what you have physically acquired in this world. Remember to remain humble. Ultimately, two things define you more than anything else. Your patience when you have very little and your attitude when you have more than enough. Number 13, let go of wanting stuff you don't need. Don't think of cost, think of value. And remember, it's always easier to find wealth by needing less instead of making more and more and more. Read The Total Money Makeover. Number 14, let go of seeking happiness from outside yourself. In life, you have to create your own sunshine. Happiness starts from within. So read something positive every morning and do something positive before you go back to sleep. Keep your focus on all the positive possibilities and opportunities and you will feel great. Feel great and you will do great things. Number 15, hear that in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled 30 Things to Let Go Of Before the New Year by Mark Sharonoff of markandangel.com. And might I amend number 14 by saying, so read or listen to something positive every morning. I think that would help also. And I will finish the rest of this post for you tomorrow on New Year's Day. And one last time, you can have a chance to win Mark and Angel's hefty book, 1,000 Little Things Happy Successful People Do Differently if you're part of my weekly newsletter. Today is the last day before the giveaway. You need to be entered by midnight tonight to have a chance to win their book. Just come by oldpodcast.com and enter your email address there or text the word optimal to the number 44222. And that enters you into the raffle automatically and be part of my free weekly newsletter family where I give you some spreadsheet tools to help you optimize your life. And you hear from me about once a week with some updates, life tips, quotes, a picture, and more. And I think that does it for today. It's the end of the year. A lot of people have been complaining about this year being terrible or joking about it. Either way, try to focus on the positive, the great things that happened this year. I'm sure many great things happened to you. So I wish you a very happy new year as we move into 2017. And I'll see you in the first day of the new year where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.